Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning is on key issues that have topped the headlines locally and nationally when it comes to civil liberties and social justice. The ACLU of Wisconsin is the state affiliate of the National American Civil Liberties Union, a nonprofit, nonpartisan, private organization. It's dedicated to defending the civil liberties and civil rights of all Wisconsin residents. My first guests represent the ACLU of Wisconsin. Karen Rotker. She's the senior staff attorney for the ACLU of Wisconsin and Jared English is the police accountability advocate. Good morning. Good morning. I thank you both for being here and let's start off talking a little bit more about the ACLU of Wisconsin and what it is you do. Sure. The, we are a nonprofit. We, as you said, advocate for civil liberties and civil rights of everyone, and that runs the spectrum from First Amendment rights, free speech, which is what the ACLU is known for. Mm -hmm. um, we've had cases involving prisoners' rights, immigrant rights, LGBT rights, and of course the rights of people of color in the city of Milwaukee uh, not to be harassed by the police. Yes, and so Karen, uh, talk about the importance of protecting those rights and liberties that the Constitution and laws of the United States specifically uh, guarantee for everyone in this country. Well, the rights are there, but they don't enforce themselves. So we need advocates to enforce those rights, some of it by organizing and education and also by litigation when we need to be doing that. Yeah, and Jared, if you would tell us uh, more about what you do. I know that you work with the youth and organizing, yes. but you also are the police accountability advocate. Talk yes. about that. Um, so as Karen said, um, it's uh, absolutely imperative that you know laws aren't just written that they're um, enforced and that um, people are aware of the protections that they have, um, that they are aware of the, um, you know, the devices they have to complain when things go wrong. Um, and so, you know, a decent part of my job is, is education. Um, I work in the Youth and Programs Department uh, under uh, Emilio De Torre, who's the director of that department. Mm -hmm. And um, we do lots and lots of training on civics, lots and lots of training on um, people knowing their rights, specifically the Fourth and Fifth Amendment. Um, and specifically with youth. Um, and then the other parts of my job, actually about two thirds of it, um, is working on police um, accountability issues. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, unfortunately we have, you know, a situation where, you know, we have, uh, you know, a lot of people who uh, have not so great encounters with the police and they're, you know, they're not warranted. Um, a lot of the times. Yeah, and I think it's needless to say that we all would like to see positive police community relations, uh, but for the past three years, both the National and ACLU of Wisconsin has conducted an investigation that's dealing with the stop and frisk program. So with that said, last month a lawsuit was filed against the city of Milwaukee as well as the Milwaukee Police Department. You guys want to fill us in on that? Sure, so last month we filed a lawsuit the stop and frisk program has two elements to it. Mm -hmm. First of all, there is widespread stopping people, both pedestrians and people in vehicles, without reasonable suspicion mm -hmm. that they've done anything wrong at all. And then second of all, those programs appear to be, and based on data we got from the police department and elsewhere, appear to be targeted particularly at communities of color, at people of color in the city. And so that violates both the Fourth Amendment prohibition on unreasonable searches and seizures and also the 14th Amendment equal protection guarantees. Okay, and Jared, feel free to chime in at any time if you have thoughts on anything that uh, we are discussing. Uh, you believe that these stop and frisk are motivated, as you said, by race and ethnicity, while the president of the Milwaukee Police Association, Mike Cravello, disagrees. He said in a statement that uh, the problem is Chief Flynn's emphasis on quantity of work over quality. What are your thoughts on that? I would say there's, again, two aspects of it. First of all, regardless of who's being targeted, we believe it's unconstitutional to stop people without reasonable suspicion, period. And the, there, has been, there have been public statements that indicate that's exactly what the police department is doing. The separate part is certainly we know that 
for a variety of reasons, it does appear that people of color are in fact the targets, mm -hmm. of, or disproportionately, the target targeted for those stops in prison. It's not just occurring in so-called high crime neighborhoods. One of our clients, it occurred to him while he was walking, I believe, on the river walk right yeah. downtown. Um, while he was walking. While he was walking, and he's not the only one. There's all the plaintiffs um, in this case. Um, they're you know they're law-abiding people. Um, they uh, they weren't doing anything wrong in in, in all these circumstances. Um, as Karen said, these weren't in um, you know quote unquote stereotypical um, neighborhoods that the department might speak of. Um, you know, there's people being stopped um, by Miller Park. There's people being stopped in the the smack dab middle of downtown, um, the east side, um, and, and in multiple areas uh, where, you know, um, for better or worse, uh, you know, they were targeted. And all of these are, you know, people of color. Mm -hmm. And with this lawsuit, it says that MPD traffic stops increased from 66,000 in 2007 to close to 200,000 mm -hmm. in 2015. That's a huge jump well, in numbers. If you think about the, the population of the city of Milwaukee proper, it's about a little bit over 599,000 people. So mm -hmm. we're roughly at half the population of Milwaukee being stopped. Um, and so what that means is not they're stopping individual 299,000 individual people. That means they're stopping lots of people multiple times. Mm. Um, and so, and particularly in, in black and Latino neighborhoods. Yes. And that was a deliberate policy. There was a deliberate policy made to dramatically increase the number of stops of people for whatever reason or apparently no reason at all. Mm. And a Milwaukee Journal Sentinel investigation revealed about six years ago that black Milwaukee drivers were seven times as likely to be pulled over as whites and um, needless to say you think these policies are unconstitutional. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Andrea, that's a great point because um, you know it's, it's one of those things that um, this has been happening for a while and so this this litigation is basically kind of a last resort because um, you know We've been advocating, the ACLU, lots of community groups, lots of different uh, organizations advocating uh, that MPD, uh, the Milwaukee Police Department, changes um, these policies and these, these uh, you know, forms of um, deployment, um, and they haven't done so. And so uh, this litigation is, you know, basically to force that, um, you know, those policies to come back into um, accordance with the law. Wow. Now the lawsuit was filed on behalf of six black and Latino plaintiffs who say they've been stopped once or numerous times over the years without a citation or clear explanation and all of them have uh, seriously different backgrounds. That Yeah, they are, our clients range in age from, the youngest was first stopped when he was 11 and was walking, was on his way to a play date. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the oldest is a veteran who is in his 60s. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it runs the gamut in between. And um, it shows, and, and as Jared said, these were all folks stopped in different neighborhoods, different parts of the city, some in African-American or Latino neighborhoods and others not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then looking on the other side of the suit, we have to be fair in that way. Milwaukee's police chief, Ed Flynn, did react to your 80-page lawsuit and defended his officers. He said, quote, there's no more serious allegation in 21st century America than to be accused of racist and biased behavior. He went on to say the MPD has never used the practice of stop and frisk and nor has there ever been a quota for traffic stops. However, traffic stops in high crime areas have been proven to reduce the number of non-fatal shootings, robberies, and motor vehicles. So I guess, in quote I should say, I'm guessing that the question remains, how do they determine who is going to be stopped in these high crime areas? So would we say it's racial profiling or would it be something like somebody's windows are tinted too dark and they get stopped and, been, and give a warning? Well, some of this is information that we will find more out in discovery in the litigation process. I want to be clear, and I think it's important to say, people do not lose their constitutional rights just mm -hmm. because they live in a high crime neighborhood. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so saying it's okay to stop 
everybody or frisk everybody when they're in a high crime neighborhood. That's not what the Constitution requires. Yeah. In terms of whether it's called a stop and frisk program or not, what they are in fact doing is stopping thousands, if not tens of thousands of people without any indication of any legally sufficient reason or any reason at all. Sometimes it's vague things like suspicious person and sometimes it, there's no reason at all listed. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a stop and whatever you call it. And there are very large numbers of people, including again our young plaintiff who, as I believe the time he was 11 was yeah. frisked, without any reasonable suspicion to believe they're armed or dangerous. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and that's a, a, a great thing to point out because there's, for better or worse, lots and lots of uh, young people of color um, who I've interviewed over the years, many uh, hundreds in fact, um, who, you know, as Karen said, were doing basically nothing wrong. And so in the instance of um, our 11-year-old plaintiff, um, he was on his way to his friend's house on a play date, walking up to the porch, and, you know, he gets stopped by an officer, um, his cell phone is taken um, for no reason, no articulable reason. Um, he's told to, you know, uh, lean up against the car, and you know all these kind of really traumatic things. You imagine your 11-year-old kid walking in a neighborhood, um, and all of a sudden you have a person, you know, with you know guns and and who's bigger and stronger than you, yeah. telling you to do these things with no parent, no one who's a, a safety net near. Um, and so fortunately, his friend's father, um, you know, came to intervene in that situation. Um, but you know that happens many thousands of times in Milwaukee. Yeah, uh, and I just I was thinking of this when you were talking about that. Senator Lena Taylor uh, came on the show uh, a while back, and she talked about her son, uh, who is a young man. He was literally running a turkey over to a neighbor for Christmas, and her son was. Uh, stopped and put into the police car. So uh, really, it doesn't matter who your mom is, your dad, whatever. It happens every single day, and that is just another example. That's right. And and you know, Jar as Jared said, he's talked to hundreds of people with this experience. We would, we are continuing to collect stories. So I just want to be clear about that. Mm -hmm. We can talk a little later about how to share that information. But we know it. It happens so often that there are a lot of people who don't even know it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, they only stopped me for 20 minutes, so it's not a big deal, or something like that. But it is wrong, and we do want to hear from people. Well, we're quickly running out of time, so this is the time to let our viewers at home know about a phone number they can call. And you also have a website where people can report such mm -hmm. incidents to the ACLU of Wisconsin. Absolutely. Um, so um, the, the most efficient way um, to people, for people to report um, any incidents that they've had with Milwaukee police um, is to go to our uh, forum on our website and that's www.aclu-wi.org forward slash police um, and you can also um, from that uh, form there's uh, a line if whatever reason you can't fill that out you can give us a call and, and uh, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, well, thank you for sharing that. And ironically, I wanted to mention, this lawsuit comes as the public is awaiting the outcome of a collaborative reform report from the U.S. Department of Justice that Chief Flynn requested following the killing of Don Trey Hamilton by a former Milwaukee police officer. So that report will evaluate the police department's use of force, training, as well as the stop and searches of citizens. So it will be interesting to see what the U.S. Department mm -hmm. of Justice comes up with in regards to what you've gathered over the years. That's right, although that's not legally binding, which is part yeah. of why a lawsuit is important to have some mm -hmm. more legal force behind it. Um, okay. Let me just also share that this is a lawsuit to try and get the Milwaukee police to change their practices. Some folks have asked, we're not asking for money, we're not trying to mm -hmm. get damages for people. We want them to change what they're doing so that everyone in the city can enjoy their constitutional rights. All right, Absolutely. and that's an important point to make. Thank you both so much for coming by and sharing all of this important information. And uh, I'm wondering about how long do you think something like this will take to go through the court system? Um, Hard to say, huh? A, a few <laughs> years is not uncommon. Hopefully just a few. And 
potentially less, depending on how the city decides they want to respond to it. Okay, well, uh, we'll all keep our eyes and ears open. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Karen Rotker is a senior staff attorney for the ACLU of Wisconsin, and Jared English, he's a police accountability advocate. For more information, you can again visit their website at ACLU dash wi dot org slash police or call 414-272-4032. When we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll continue our conversation dealing with the civil rights and social justice of people living right here in our city. We'll meet Nancy Flores, an organizer for Voices de la Frontera, right after this.